Hi, welcome back to Cosmere's YouTube channel and I'm Dave, still the director of Cosmere Festival. So you might have caught a video that we put out earlier in the year looking at my book collection, how many books were in it, what kind of books they were. And I promised at the time that I'd take a look back at some of the years that I didn't own many genre books and try and figure out why I don't know there are many and if there were books I should be buying to fill gaps in my collection. So this is the first of those videos and we're going to be focusing on the year 2000. So let's kick off by looking at what I already own that was published in the year 2000, and that was six genre books. Look to Windward by Ian M. Banks, The Naked God by Peter F. Hamilton, The Sky Road by Ken McLeod, Perdido Street Station by Charlie Mieville, The Fifth Elephant by Terry Pratchett, and Merrick by Anne Rice. Now I've read and enjoyed all of these, apart from Perdido Street Station, I just, I can just never get into it, I'm really sorry. I know it's seen as one of those kind of classics, it just doesn't quite do it for me and I've tried a couple of times over the last 20 years and I've kind of given up. Now the other authors on the list are some of my favourites, at least by numbers. I own 24 books that Ian Banks published, 17 books that Peter Hamilton has published and then 10 apiece by Ken McLeod and Terry Pratchett if you count the um, Guards trilogy as three books rather than one, if not it's eight. There are some provisos. Not all of these books were first published in the year 2000. And I do actually own more books that were just in later editions. Also, I didn't necessarily buy them all in the year 2000. There were a mix of hardbacks and paperbacks, although I think Look for Windward might be the only hardback. Now, and it is a snapshot, I think, though, of what was on the shelves in the year 2000 that were kind of new or pretty much new for fans of genre to buy. So it still feels worth looking at what I've got and why I don't have other books in my collection. And I wanted to look at what else was published that year and really reflect on why I don't own those books. I haven't looked them out in the years since. So I started by spending quite a bit of time looking at what was published in the UK in the year 2000 in genre, paperback and hardback. So it's kind of capturing the 1990 to 2001 period really and reissues of books that have been published earlier. It turns out the easiest way to do this is by visiting a very quiet and not very well advertised corner of a well-known e-booksellers website, filtering by the genres and then sorting by popularity. That's how I went about it. And I actually looked at about half the books that were published in 2000 in genre in that year, all told, and then I kind of ran out of steam in both. Sorting by popularity, I think I covered all of the most popular books, but there may well have been things that I missed which have become classics in the future. It was still an awful lot to get through. Now, if you've got things that I've missed out, you can leave those in the comments because it'd be great to know what I didn't pick up on. And what I did was I looked at that list as a buyer and also as somebody that's been looking at the history of science fiction and fantasy, just to see things there that stood out to me as ones that I'd missed out on either by ones that I would buy if I saw them on the shelves today, or ones that at least are notable and are interesting. Now, it's likely that I bought other books in the year 2000, that those six or the 11 total books in my collection weren't the sum of all the books that I ended up acquiring, but it'd be impossible to figure out that by just um, the spreadsheet. I don't have all the receipts. Now, here's some context of me in the year 2000. I was a student at university, so I didn't have masses of disposable income. I was spending my disposable income on other things like socialising. And also I was buying books for my studies rather than for fun as much. When I was at home, I didn't have access to massive bookshops where I could see loads of genre publications. There was a Waterstones in the nearest city to me and a WH Smiths, but my hometown didn't have a bookshop. And at university there was a Waterstones and again that was about it. So my options to come across books were really limited. So enough about me, enough about preamble and context and mealy mouth excuses. Let's look at what I found. Number one. To be honest I don't think I was missing out. I ended up looking at about two and a half thousand books that had been for sale on that ebook seller 
in the year 2000. Now I already owned a few that were published in other years, another seven books, so that might push my year 2000 total up to about 13. Still not a lot, but to be honest, a lot of what else was available wasn't grabbing me at all. At the end of the video, I am going to talk about books that are now on my radar or on my kind of wish list that I'm going to start to pick up if I see them because they're interesting to me. But I would be very surprised if I ever owned more than about 20 genre books that were published in that year out of what was probably about four to five thousand books published in the UK. Number two, there were a lot of series. Even the books I already owned were generally part of decent sized series. Now on that big list, two and a half thousand books, sometimes it was book one in a series. Um, I'm thinking, um, I, I think Alice Reynolds, that was the first one. Um, Perito Street Station, I think you can see is the first one in a series, but often it wasn't. You're looking at books two, three, four, five, six. If you were plonked on this planet in the year 2000 and told to buy what was out that year only, you'd have been absolutely lost for almost any series or any story. Number three, the artwork has aged pretty badly as far as I'm concerned. I happen to think we're living in a golden age of book art for genre publishing. There's some brilliant artwork in the books that I bought in the last year or two. The year 2000 was not that. Number four, diversity is not the winner. Mostly the people who were being published were very Western, I mean they were very UK, but if nothing else, UK and America. It was also a year for big and established names. Now by this I mean your yeah, Ursula Le Guin, Zee Banks, Anne McCaffrey, Philip Pullman, Peter Hamilton, China Mieville was obviously not a big name then but has become one. George R. R. Martin, Alistair Reynolds, Neil Gaiman, Gregory Bentford, Octavia Butler, J.K. Rowling, I don't know if you've heard of her, she's apparently quite popular, Terry Pratchett, it's big names or it's big um, brands, so lots of Star Wars tie-ins, lots of Doctor Who tie-ins. There's not a lot of space on those lists for new and emerging authors. There are some, and they are getting some awards recognition, we'll come on to that in a little bit, but not necessarily lots and lots of interesting authors um, that you might see today, new voices, new authors, new spaces for those people to be published. So I was buying books, as I mentioned before, in big spaces. And actually I took a look back at what my online e-retailer of books um, history was for the year 2000. And I only bought one book. I think that was the year that I set up an account and it was not even a book for me. It was a gift, it was about a wrestler, I definitely know who it was for, um, but I wasn't buying books online, I was buying them physically, so I was really dependent on who booksellers were stocking, and I think, I think there's a connection there to those big names. Year 2000 feels like a year in transition for me. British writers or established names are in the ascendancy in terms of awards and sales and popularity, and it feels like quite a safe time. We're probably on the brink of a new generation of authors that are gonna be coming through. So I, as I do more of these videos, I might start to pick on some of those. But it felt very much to me that it's the 80s and the 90s are still pushing out a lot of the content that people were enjoying. And I took a look at who won the major awards in 2001. So kind of looking back at the year 2000 in publishing, who won the awards for those years. Now, if you look at the Nebula and the Philip K. Dick, you've got Greg Bears winning the Nebula, and Michael Marshall Smith, an author I'd not heard of, winning the Philip K. Dick. And actually, when I looked at those two, apart from Greg Bear, I didn't own any books by any of the authors on the, the winners or the shortlist, or even had heard of most of them. So very, very um, distinct time, I think, where maybe there were authors coming through who didn't manage to break through and become big and popular. The Hugos was won by J.K. Rowling for Goblet of Fire, and George R.R. Martin was second with Storm of Swords. So fantasy is dominating there. I think he was second, he was uh, shortlisted anyway. But Chemical Cloud was shortlisted, which was great to see with the Sky Road. And then looking at the Arthur C. Clarke and the BSFA, you've got China Mieva won both with Pedido Street Station. So it was an incredibly popular novel in terms of critical acclaim, and I remember that from the time. Also in Arthur C. Clarke, in terms of nominations, you've got Octavia Butler, you've got Ken McLeod for Cosmonaut Keep, Alistair Reynolds, Adam Roberts, so lots of authors who um, are very well, well-known names and in most cases still publishing today. 
books on there that I didn't spot actually on my list when I did my review that didn't stand out to me. Uh, Mary Gentle, Ash, A Secret History, that did not leap out at me at all. Um, Robert J. Sawyer was uh, nominated for the Hugos for Calculating God. Um, and Lois McMaster Bujold, um, I've never had, necessarily had interest in reading those. That was on the Nebula shortlist as well. The best selling books in genre were J.K. Rowling with Harry Potter and Philip Pullman with His Dark Materials. And I got into those a little bit later on. I'll probably, they'll be on a list maybe for one of these videos for me. But um, it's really fantasy aimed at young people and young adults that is driving sales in genre. And there aren't lots of exciting new big names who are making a splash in the world of genre apart from China Mieville. So to end, what am I going to buy to add to my 2000s total? Because I'd like to expand in areas where I'm interested. Well, the first one is happening quite soon um, that I'm going to talk about. Cosmonauts Keep, which is the first in a trilogy by Ken McLeod, I think is going to be in Santa's sack for me this Christmas. There's also a Greg Bear or a couple of Greg Bears that I want to check out. Darwin's Radio, which I don't own, and at least one more of his that was on the list. I'm also fascinated by The Minotaur Takes a Cigarette Break. I'm interested in The Telling by Ursula Le Guin and The Parable of the Talents by Octavia Butler, neither of which I've read. The Phoenix Code, The Martian Race, that's Gregory Bentford. I don't know any of his books. Blind Waves by Stephen Gould. Um, I'm not a big fan of Stephen Baxter, but The Light of Other Days by, that he wrote with Arthur C. Clarke might make it into my collection. And there is one book I have already purchased because it was the one that really stood out to me from those shortlists and from the um, survey I did of books that were published, which is Midnight Robert by Nalo Hopkinson. Um, this, uh, was, this research was done before she won her Lifetime Award quite recently by the Science Fiction Writers uh, Guild of America, but um, I, I feel really embarrassed that that is an author that I've neglected in my reading history. So that is already in my collection and I'll probably be including it in some Cosmere content in 2021. So tune in next time, our next video, we're gonna go forward in time to the magical world of 2001 and go on a bit of a book odyssey. That's again, a very small number of books that I owned that were published in that year. And then we'll probably go back and party like it's 1999. So I hope you stick around um, and enjoy that content. If you want to know when it's out, click the um, like and subscribe to get the notifications of that. And check out all the other videos on our channel, including some great content that was put out as part of Cosmere Festival 2020. As always, stay safe and we'll see you very soon.